Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode, we finished up the business in Eleutheria, and now, finally, after a lot of time, much more time than I thought, we're back in the Blue Kingdom. There's a lot to do here at, I think, pretty much every stop. Death's Doorstep, something to do there. Forge of Souls, yes. The House of Days, yes. The White Well, yes. Pretty much everywhere. Let's see if we can do anything here directly at Sky Barnet. I don't exactly remember. Oh, we need to take a, a litigator on board because we stopped paying the other one a long time ago because it took me so long to get back here. Volume of notes. Oh, the cow loquacitor. That's the person I had in the beginning, right? Challenges of hearts and veils. That's kind of what I need. Mirrors and hearts. That's okay, too. Hmm. Let's hire a nameless spirit with a vision of the heavens. Yeah, this is the one we had previously. I think the first one he had was, was the cowled loquacitor. And then the second one was the nameless spirit. Anything to do with the embassy? Right, I'm supposed to deliver the report or the... The, uh... What exactly am I delivering? The, the dignity of Albion Bill? Is that what I'm delivering? To the Blue Kingdom is what they said? Not exactly sure where in the Blue Kingdom, but probably the embassy. Maybe pay visit to the ambassador? No. That is a thing, right? Do you become involved with the parliament, deliver the dignity of Albion Bill to the throne of ours, or the Blue Kingdom? Ah, right. The throne of ours, I think, was more of the... The Throne of Hours is basically giving the whole plan up, I think. And going into bed with London and the Blue Kingdom is the not that, which is the one I'm going to do. But yeah, Blue Kingdom is not a specific place. So if it's not the embassy, where is it? I guess there's nothing to do right right here, is there? Grabbed a couple prospects, gemstones for Death's Door, Bombazine for the Forge of Souls. But you know what? Let's just pop over real quick to the House of Days. Now that I have the Cryptic Benefactors, I should be able to take some more chances at uh, doing the rental dispute thing. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's get some fuel, I suppose, a little bit. I have a lot of supplies on me. I don't need that many supplies on me at one time. I'm storing a bunch in the bank so I can actually get supplies to the Blue Kingdom. Without having to go back and forth. I've got 49 in storage. That should be enough, right? <laughs> it better be. I don't think I'm going to cut a lot of the travel around the Blue Kingdom. Because it's been a while since I've been here. And it's particularly dangerous. Also, I don't think I've been to the Blue Kingdom with this gun. Or this weapon. Because it's not really a gun, is it? I think I only came here with the machine gun type thing, so I want to see how this performs against all the things. I think it's somewhere here in the House of Days that I can become ephemeral. Somebody, oops, somebody in the comments was telling me about how I become all the different statuses. And I think this is where you become ephemeral, and ephemeral is basically the only way for me to once again get down into the tunnels at death's door which i need to finish finish what quest oh the bleak industrialists quest they're a lost lover yeah so if i can become a ephemeral i guess i'll do it there's the court of mules where i need to do the thing right Uh, I need a testament of the feather. Can't I get that here? It must be the testament of the feather that requires a cryptic benefactor. I, I don't remember how this place works. <laughs> Bingle in the crowd, does that do anything? What did I just do? I guess I lowered terror, but it was already basically nothing. Let's just go straight in. Court of Apes. Ah, yes. Testament of the Feather, that's what needed cryptic benefactors. 89% chance of success. I should just get a bunch of these, honestly. I'm sure it's going to be more than just one that I want. Is 
We've done this before, so I'm not going to read that. I don't know, let's get like four of them maybe? They're almost guaranteed. 89% chance? Yeah, that's good. Now to the Court of Mules. Contest the interpretation of the Embassy Lease. To be seen in the Court of Mules, one must either belong to the court by nature or be sent by another functionary. You must surrender your testament of the feather in order to be given a place in line. Then you must wash your body with a sponge dipped in vinegar water. After this, the masked attendant kneels beside you on a square of bleached linen. She takes careful and copious notes. She does say with a sigh that you can never tell with contracts drawn up by devils. Finally, she asks, Should the ambassador of Albion hold the toll tower, though it belonged to the devils for millennia? Though she has already stretched her time with imported hours, though she has no respect for bounds. This choice will commit you to act against the devils and for the ambassador. I can't say I particularly like devils, but I definitely like London less. And what is the embassy except a little tendril of London? Yeah, that sounds like fun. Well, when it's put that way, no. Albion has no rightful claim. <laughs> then we are pursuing an eviction, says the attendant. The Court of Oaks controls precedent around unreasonable delays and matters of endurance. Ask them to rule. Go to the Court of Oaks to negotiate, renegotiate the lease in favor of the devils. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, 36%? That's not as bad as I thought. I saw the red and thought, like, what is it going to be, 10%? Um, oh, are there different ways to do this? Yeah. So basically, for a pretty cheap price, and with a iron check, I can just wait. Or if I pay a little bit more, the three barrels. Oh, this is how I claim the status of ephemera. Just two casks of Navartine gemstones. Just. <laughs> that's that's late game for you. Just two casks of gemstones. Um, but yeah, if I bring three barrels of unseasoned hours, I don't need to pass a skill check. So I should do that. And also do this. Oh, I need a testament of salt. Yeah, that's not going to happen super soon. You have been yoked long enough. The Court of Oaks might rule you to be free. Hmm. Alright, well, for now, let me just grab some barrels of unseasoned hours, and I'll be right back. Got the barrels of hours. Hurry up ruling on an overlong contract. Spend a barrel of hours to get a hearing sooner. Granted, in a slightly cheating manner. The attendant asks about the ambassador, Albion, your opinion of devils, and your reasons for siding with them against your own kind. She inks your tongue and takes its imprint. She tests your spittle with drops that turn into vigorous puce to check for spite. Then she writes out her own notes in handwriting like the trace of a vine. She adduces five precedents which have been bearing, which have bearing on this case. On the lease itself, she places a symbol which means the tree that dies upright in the forest but does not fall until a snow comes. Visit the Pansacritus in the House of Days for a final ruling between Albion and the Devils. This is quite a process, isn't it? Bureaucracy of the Dead. Oh, what is this? Return to the present? What does this take? You still possess your liver. Oh, that freaked me out for a second. Or not freaked me out, but confused me, because I think that's the picture for Red Amber. I think they used the same picture for the liver as Red Amber. I'm like, why do I need Red Amber here? Is 
That requires a testament of the feather. I forgot if I ever succeeded at doing anything in here, but now that I can get a lot of testaments of the feather, I suppose I should just do that. I can also have my litigator argue for my right to enter. I think that has pretty much the same effect. Oh, I, it looks like I have to get in there anyway to get it approved, right? So, all right, get me in there. Yes, I think it's make a study of the Pansagritas. This is what I think I failed every time. You can only do one thing here before being cast out to be sure of your choice. Well, rental dispute first. Enforce the eviction of the Embassy of Albion. It is time. I have this picture in my head of this being enforced by the Logoi. I'm imagining just a big cloud of fire just coming to the embassy and giving you a box and being like, here, take your things out. You're fired. Your skin burns, your hair prickles, you're frisked by a hurricane. There are no questions. You might have thought that there would be some final consultation, that you would have to defend your case to this final arbiter. But the Pansacritus has no interest in your words. It marks your paperwork with its own name, which is to say with itself. Then it's finished noticing you. You're left holding something that looks like a lease document, but that weighs on your hand like a sword. You must deliver it to the ambassador, and it will evict the embassy at once. You forgot to ask what would happen to you. Deliver an eviction to the ambassador at the embassy of Albion in the Toll Tower. This is going to be very funny. They hired me to solve the rental dispute, and I'm like, yeah, solved it. Here you go. Let's go back inside. Make a study of the Pansacritus. Yes. Staring into something blinding, you stand at the outskirts of the court in an attitude of supplication, with your knees slightly bent and your palms outward. As long as you hold this appearance of worship, no one troubles you, and you're free to observe. The Pansacritus grants an obliteration against a city founded on land that did not belong to the founders and authorizes a ritual of cease cessation against language that should no longer be spoken. This is the Pansacritus, not fire, ice, hurricane, or trumpet blast, but a power for which there is no difference between intention and achievement. Searing Enigma. Let's deliver the good news. another visit. Deliver a notice of eviction. Stamped, sealed, signed, and readied. The ambassador reads the findings of each court. At the end, beneath the sigil of the Pansacritus, there is a place for her own signature to acknowledge her eviction. She struggles, but her scarred left arm stretches out and her left hand signs the page. Then an avalanche of time sweeps away the embassy of Albion. There's no ambassador, no secretary, no attaché. Your gut slackens with hunger. Your throat dries. The larvae of moths sprout in your clothing, eat and fly away. A blink later, you stand in the court of porphyry and brass. Devils crowd you with gifts. I now have five of the... Porphyry Court's gratitude. Three things of immaculate souls, a testament of the roses? Captivating treasure? The Embassy of Albion has been forced out of the Toll Tower. I was hoping for more of a reaction, but... How did time just do this? I was wondering how exactly this was going to be enforced or carried out, you know? And I guess something... Like maybe the Wulu Kingdom itself just... I, d I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Well. Whole new everything, right? I mean, all the stores are still the same, right? Same ships. Yeah, that's not any different. 
What about the marketplace of litigators? An embittered devil. Was that always there? I think so. Hmm. But the court is obviously new. Court of Porphyry and Brass. All that was once the embassy of Albion has been stripped away, save the pink floral carpet. The false paneling is gone, revealing a vaulted open space, suited to the House of Days. The ribs of the ceiling are porphyry, embellished with brass devil heads. Where the portraits of the Empress used to hang, there's now a lavish oil painting of Carillon, showing each soul being tormented in its own way, according to its need. <laughs> Exchange gratitude for a condemned experiment. Gratitude for an unlicensed chart. Invest in a crimson promise. Seven gratitude. Ask what happened to the Embassy of Albion. It was here and now it very much is not. The Devilus explains. In the Blue Kingdom, it takes a long time to receive a decision. But once a case has been judged, the execution is instant. In this case, it was proven that the embassy should have moved out years earlier, and so the sentence applied retroactively. <laughs> what? I hope you weren't feeling ill, she adds, solicitously. You should not have been harmed, but the execution of the command may have produced some side effects for those in the vicinity. So they've retroactively been here for years. Huh. That's cool. So nothing much really changes. I still turn a port reports here. I can exchange it for things, although different things. And everything else is exactly the same. But hopefully this makes some difference in the story. In the future, I don't know. Now let's head on over to the White Well. Got a couple things to do there. That's a place where we can convince the last of the eccentrics cats to leave and we also need to go back to the psalmists now that we've recruited all of the people we possibly can to join their cause remember from brabazon and carillon i think was another one of them and i'm not sure there was one or two others holding my breath for the first enemy Hopefully this place is a little bit less dangerous, now that I have these more long-distance, safe weapons. Oh, hey buddy. Oh, you stop there? I'm gonna have to kill you, because, yeah, you're gonna come for me in just a second. Ow. They really wedge themselves in there. Gotta remember that terror is extremely hard to shake here, so any opportunity to shake it, I should take it. Such as. Oh, wait, leave the wreck untouched. Actually, I don't think that does shake terror. I think it's like more than the crew that does it. Right? Yeah, I actually gained some terror with that. Just a little bit, though. scorned a priest. Deliver a new batch of followers to the priest. They step out into unwelcoming winds, shivering, hands clamped under armpits. The priest welcomes them with a cursory nod. You, get chopping wood for the fire. You, keep watch. Uh, you three, grab a shovel each and start clearing snow from our porch. The priest snaps his orders with military efficiency. The new converts hesitate. Can we listen to a sermon before we get to work? 
perhaps take a moment for prayer? Asks one of the new parishioners. We had some questions about the theological connotations of... Here's a classic sermon of mine, says the priest. May your guts turn to bloated jellyfish if you don't get to work right now. <laughs> Alright. The psalmist's strength is still very low. They may not survive another battle with the widows. Okay, so they're going to get stronger with each new batch that I give them, and I should be able to give them a couple more. Yep, another one. Uh, yep, same description. Psalmists are back to their previous strength, but the widows still outnumber them. Psalmists shuffle from your locomotive grumbling. Oh, no, that's not it. The psalmist's strength is greater than ever before. I have delivered enough. The psalmist's strength is greater than it was. The priest believes he can overcome the widows if necessary. The twice-corn priest assesses his congregation with a critical eye. He sniffs. This will have to do. He turns to you. We attacked the widows too early before. If we hope to defeat them, we'll need more than clubs and stones. We'll need bullets for our rifles and a blazing new curse upon our lips. He hesitates for a moment. I meant to say when the widows attacked us, of course. Bring a creative, carefully packed munitions and a moment of inspiration. Do I have munitions on me? Oh, I don't. Dang. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do that soon. In the meantime, where do I leave the cat? Is it here or the stone court? Ah, it's here. Take Asmodi, the feline eccentric's angry ginger tom, to the edge of the well. There you can hear the furious shrieks of the failed dead trying to crawl out, and another deeper fury, one ancient and without end, skittering and numberless. As you emerge from your engine and cross the ice, the feline eccentric looks across the well at the stern silhouette of the stone-faced court. She lowers her gaze, as if the sight of it pains her. Hurry, she says, her voice tight. As Modi pads to the lip of the well and peers curiously down into the dark, his ragged ears twitch at the shrieks from below. He settles down. His eyes are wide and round. His tail twitches. The eccentric touches your arm. You leave. As Modi pays you no heed, this is where he was meant to be. Talk to the eccentric without her cats, for the first time in a long time without her cats. Her eyes are bright. She's been sleeping. She's been able to mingle with her crew without her cats intervening or haunting her new friends with nightmares. As she works, she talks softly to the engine. Her voice is rhythmed as if she was soothing an animal. You hunch near her and pass her a wrench when she gropes for it. Trying to decide what to do with myself, she tells you, still working. Apart from this, I mean. She sits back on her haunches. On one hand, I could put it all behind me, start fresh. On the other, her eyebrows furrow, I fancy causing some trouble. Trouble? I like the sound of that. Share an intimate moment when you offer to help her repair the engine. Romance with the eccentric? That would be pretty cool. Um, let's see the stats here. So, if we encourage her to leave the past behind, she becomes a gentle eccentric, ten hearts, and one to villainy and one to academia. Hmm. As far as passing heart rolls, that actually wouldn't help me at all, because they're the same... You know, they're still a chief engineer, and I have the ratty reunion, which gives me plus ten hearts. So I'd just be switching from a plus ten hearts to another plus ten hearts, which would do nothing. 
So I don't think I want that, just stat-wise anyway. She's been locked in a struggle with those damn cats for years. She deserves some peace and quiet. Encourage her to misbehave. She may, may become a brilliant eccentric who grants 10 mirrors and one to the affiliation of villainy and bohemia. I notice that they say may become. If I fail this, do they not become the thing? Uh, hmm. Misbehaving is harder than leaving the past behind, even with my terrible hearts. It's an 81% chance to succeed. 32 for this one. The eccentric chose only gentle options when dealing with her cats. Ah, I see. So depending on how you treat the cats, it might lock you out of one or the other, so I can't even do this. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. I am curious what the misbehaving would be. How, how would they misbehave? What do they have planned? Anyway, I guess I can just do this right now. Also, share an intimate moment when you offer to help her repair the engine. Anybody else thinking of just bashing my ship into a, a cliff or something for a couple minutes? <laughs> you know what? I think I can only do this option before they transform into their other self. So I'm actually going to wait. I'm not going to force the damage, but I'm sure I'll get damaged at some point. Because I think I want to do this. The princess is long gone, and Elizabeth doesn't have any interest in her anymore. Yeah, Elizabeth could use some romance. I think the only romance Elizabeth has had is just random commingling of choirs with various rubbery men and other things, maybe? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, so no more to do here. Now, let's go over to the stone court. I don't know if there's anything to... Well, I don't know if there's anything to do with the stone court, but might as well check. Stare at the abyss. It's fun just to let off mines sometimes. Yeah, I really don't think there's anything to do here, but they might have a, a deal. Yeah, I don't think I can go in. They have a bargain of a, a pittance of a jumble of undistinguished souls. That's something. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and get the munitions that I need for the psalmists. Couple eaters of the dead. Let's try the mines out. Uh oh. Yeah, I thought that hurt me. Shit. Whoa, that just disappeared. Shit. Damn it, I thought that it... Holy shit! Oh, I released a mine behind me and it hit me! Oh, that's what happened. Wow, okay. Well, that was unintentional, but I guess my ship is hurt for the feline <laughs> eccentric. Claim a trophy. Please reduce my terror. A success is a failure. You did not reduce my terror. Also, my little baby cat, Trian's being is on my desk. There we go. She just left, but she bumped the microphone. She's not literally a baby, but she's a baby. Where did the other bodies go? I must have missed him when I was petting Transpian. I don't know. 
Well, before I repair the ship, let's share an intimate moment when you offer to help her repair the engine. Normally when she's like this, she closes off, wanting to focus on the work, but you've grown close. She'd accept your help. Normally, she protects her corner of the engine room like a tigress. She has everything just how she wants it. But she puts a hand on your arm to say, it's all right, and draws you in. Everything has a place. Tools here so she can find the one she wants without looking. Spare parts there, ordered according to how often she needs them. Her instructions are practical. Her voice is soft. She places a handful of bolts in your palm. And you note that her skin, still fresh from Paranesi, is already calloused from work. The two of you set to it. It comes easily. When she needs to tighten a valve, you hand her the three-quarter inch spanner before she asks for it. When you struggle with a stiff bolt, she steps close and lends her strength to yours. You replace a gasket. She tightens a belt. You cast a glance her way and find her casting one back at the same moment. A warm smile rolls across her face and she turns back to her work. You throw a lever. The engine rumbles, then settles into a contented purr. It'll do until we make port, she grins, and nudges you teasingly with her shoulder. Nice work, you. Aw, that was cute. Yeah, I... Hmm. It's interesting. For some reason, I assumed that they were going to have sex, but... I mean, that's not the only way to have an intimate moment, and that wasn't what this was. But it was still intimate. That was nice. What if I just speak to the feline eccentric just because we're hurt, right? I think that's... Your engine will need to be in better repair before the eccentric has time to talk about personal matters. Oh, this is one where it has to be fixed. Well, actually... We're here, so I might as well do that, huh? One gratitude for a full repair. Gain 69 whole. Nice. Oh, can't speak to him anymore. Okay. Let's encourage her to leave the past behind. She has been locked in a struggle with those damn cats for years. She deserves some peace and quiet. 81% chance of success. I don't think I can get hearts from anyone else, so that's the best it's gonna get? Yes! She nods. I found a home here. It'd be good to enjoy it for a bit. Over the next weeks, the crew come to know the unfelined eccentric. She's a calming, almost motherly presence, sensitive to the mood of the crew, and a sure, steady source of advice. She still sleeps in the engine room, most times, and still talks to the engine when she's working on it. Everything's kept in impeccable order. Your locomotive practically purrs. The eccentric is gentle. That was the last quest for my officers, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Check in on the eccentric. When you lean your head around the door, she gives you an embarrassed grin. Was I doing it again? Actually, would you mind holding this a moment? She passes you a complicated gadget. It looks important. Then she clambers up onto the engine housing and begins rummaging around. As she does so, she chatters about your recent journeys and the crew. At some point, she starts talking less, and you more. By the time she asks for the gadget you're holding, you realize you've been sharing your own concerns with her for the last 15 minutes. She nods sympathetically. So is there any reason to have them uh, equipped, for lack of a better word, than the ready reunion? 
Ready Reunion gives me two establishment. This gives me more villainy and academia. That's kind of interesting for a change of pace. Two villainy, one villainy, two villainy. Oh, and you give me academia, so you're even more academia. Can I view my total academia and everything? Hmm, yeah, six villainy, ooh. Two bohemia and four academia, pretty good. I think it's nice to get high numbers in a couple things, which is, I think, about the best you can do. Opens up new opportunities.